Why, you look dusty and dirty and tired. You look as if you've come a thousand miles. Wonderful sight. And look who's come to greet you here. What a great occasion this is. To every one of you who has made this long and difficult journey, we extend our sincere thanks. You've done something really extraordinary. You've caught the imagination of all of us, even to those of you who traveled only a short distance. We owe a debt of gratitude. You have brought to the attention of millions upon millions of people across the world the story of the unparalleled migration of our people from Nauvoo and from Liverpool and beyond to this valley in the mountains. I doubt that it will ever be repeated. There is so much of regulation, so much of receiving permits. I think this will only increase through the years to come and make less likely a repetition of what you have done. In 18, 1947, there were pasteboard oxen and wagons attached to the side of automobiles in an effort to commemorate the coming of the pioneers. But you stepped back 150 years with live oxen, horses, and mules, actually pulling the wagons in which you rode and sweat beside which you walked. Some of you have even pulled authentic hand carts over the long trail. It is more than a thousand miles since we said goodbye to you in winter quarters and council bluffs last spring. You handed me there a pair of driving clubs, which I shall always treasure. Thank you for this wonderful gift and for all that it means. Although you've had many of the touches of modern travel, including roads and bridges in areas, you have experienced in a very real way much of the hardships of a century and a half ago. Your wheels again cut deep into the sandy soils of Nebraska. The silhouette of your wagons against the Wyoming sky created a picture of unique and wondrous beauty. There was a certain romance in what you have done, but there was also hardship. Hordes of mosquitoes went after you as they did those of 150 years ago. The difference is that you had repellent. <laughs> we were with you at Simpson's Hollow for the reenactment of that page of history. Our jet aircraft flew above you as you made your way to the Green River Crossing. That experience alone told something of what has happened during these past 150 years. Now you are here. You have finally arrived. You have reached the valley after you have come so very, very far. Some of you all the way from Nauvoo. You have reached the end of the trail of which tens of thousands before you dreamed in the long ago. The picture greeting you today is different from what it was in 1847. The desert has truly blossomed. Thousands of automobiles travel paved roads. Airplanes thread the skies. But with all of this, I feel we may have lost something that you have become reacquainted with. We do not look at the starry heavens at night and contemplate the wondrous things of God. We do not marvel at the sunrise and the sunset, which mark the passing days. Heat and cold, snakes and insects, sickness and accidents do not bring us face to face with the realities of our pioneer forebears. You have experienced all of these. You have also come to know something of dependence upon one another. You have taught us again the value of organization. You have reminded us of the discipline that marked the companies that traversed what is now Iowa, Nebraska, Wyoming, and Utah so very many years ago. As I reflect on the initial event which we commemorate, I am certain that Brigham Young knew long before he saw this valley. 
that this was the place in which to offer this people. Today we can dismiss from our eyes what we see and look at this valley as he first saw it. Jim Bridger had spoken very discouragingly of this area. Sam Brannan had pleaded that they go on to California, but no. Brigham Young recognized the reality of prophetic vision when he declared, this is the right place. I marvel at his boldness. No plow had ever broken the soil of this valley. He and his people knew nothing of the seasons, of the insects, of the certainty of water, of the frosts and the storms. Thousands were coming behind them, but there was no doubt in his mind. He stated that Joseph Smith had seen this valley in vision and that he knew it to be the place to locate his people. All of us today are the beneficiaries of that bold insight and tremendous vision. And now, my beloved associates in this great undertaking. There's the sisters, friends, and neighbors. Thank you for being here and for the great effort represented by all of you that brought this park into being. Last Saturday, I was on the end of a pick, and I found myself wondering for the first time if perhaps Sam Brannan hadn't been right. This ground is hard, and uh, it fought back. We are gathered this evening to dedicate this beautiful park to the memory of a handful of intrepid pioneers who camped here exactly 150 years ago this night. But not just to their memory, but to the memory of all of those who followed them across that same barren and dusty trail into this valley over the 22 years that followed. Some 60,000 of them came by wagon, by foot, and by other means until the Iron Horse was completed in 1869 to lighten that burden. Thousands lost their lives and are buried in unmarked graves, some of the mass graves across the highlands of Wyoming and alongside the old trail in Iowa and Nebraska. This 22-year trek is unparalleled by anything in the annals of this nation's history. It must have been an incredible sight to, to behold. In 1848, just one year after the event we memorialize here, one reporter estimated the Mormon wagon train of that year at 600 miles and 40 days travel in length. While their westward moving contemporaries primarily were Americans and were motivated by the promises of gold, land, money, and a better life, the Mormon migration consisted of a mixture of Europeans and Americans who were united by a common faith and who were driven by an almost desperate determination to find a place where they could live together in peace and worship according to the inclination of their hearts. The legacy of faith, courage, determination, grit, and vision they left is a legacy for all of us. It matters not whether we are Mormons or not. It matters not whether we were raised in this state or moved here yesterday. What matters is that we all own and love and share this beautiful community which they founded and handed off to us of this generation. I feel like Joshua was speaking to us when near the end of his life he made this statement to the children of Israel. And I have given you a land, he said, for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them. Of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted not, do you eat? The excellent PBS television special on the Mormon emigration, which was aired last Sunday evening, ended with these stirring words from an author who was not named. They cut desire into short lengths and fed it to the hungry fires of courage. Long after, when the flames had died, molten gold gleamed in the ashes. They gathered it into bruised palms and handed it to their children and to their children's children forever. That gold refined in the fire of their adversity is now our treasured possession. Tonight it gleams a little brighter in my heart and in yours. This park is a marvelous and tangible symbol of our acknowledgement of that legacy.